Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And the people of God say, Amen. Let's be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. I want to speak briefly on the things you need to succeed or prosper in year 2023. What are those things that you need? You don't know. Year 2023 is an unknown venture. It's an unknown venture to all men, for all men, with all men. The only person who knows is the Alpha and the Omega because it is known to God and even it is as ordained by him. The book of Acts, because Acts 15, 18 says, known unto God are all his works from the foundations of the world. Hallelujah. And like we saw with Jacob in that passage that we read, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, said the secret in belong, things belong unto God. And those things that are revealed unto us, they belong to us and our children forever, that we may do all the works of this law. I pray the Almighty God, we open your eyes of understanding to see the secret for success this year in the mighty name of Jesus. So what are those things that we need? Number one is to ask God to bless you with divine and uncommon inspiration and ideas that will solve human problems, as he did for Jacob in our text. Jacob was, he didn't know what to do, but God appeared to him and opened his eyes to say what he needed to do. And I pray, even whether you sleep or you are walking, the Spirit of God will speak to you and will tell you what to do in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have the ideas that solve people's problems or human problems, then it means other people's problems will become your prosperity, will become your source of income. And I pray that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Like that song that they um, do sing that said, I'm the solution to rebellion. I pray you'll be a solution to human problems. And men will celebrate you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the book of Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 and 2, God chose a man there. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. You can read it up to verse 6. There's another person who said he's going to join them. And he said, I indeed, verse 6, I have appointed with him Aolia, the son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan. Hallelujah. I don't know, but I don't know about you. Even up till now, when you go to those very old cathedrals, because they are replicas of what it was in the New Testament. And I begin to wonder, how did men craft some of these things? I don't know about you. It was a replica of some of the things that God said should be done in the book of Leviticus, how they should build the temple. So imagine the sort of skills that this man, Bezalel, was endowed with by God. So if you have such a thing, then you will definitely prosper. And I pray the Almighty God will single you out like Bezalel and Aulia in the name of Jesus Christ. Because when you are singled out, it means definitely you will be, people will run to you to say, I want to get this thing. And because we are in the information highway, you don't need to be everywhere. Why are people talking about Bezos? Why are people talking about uh, Zuckerberg? Why are people talking about Elon Musk? It is because they add solution to human problems. It can also be you. 
It will be somebody here in the mighty name of Jesus. So where you are, I want you to talk to God. Using Romans 9, 15, he said he will be, he would have mercy on who he will have mercy. And he will have compassion on whom he would have compassion. I want you to talk to God where you are sitting and say, Father, that womb, let it be me. The womb that you want to have mercy on, let it be me. The womb that you want to have compassion on, let it be me. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Number two, another secret of success is giving. Give. It shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. It says, shall men give unto you. So if you give, and men are given unto you, how much more our heavenly father, who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the one who teaches your hands to make wealth, it means he would even give you more than men can give you. Because the arms of man can carry you up to where their arms can reach. But the Bible tells me, underneath are his everlasting arms. That everlasting arms will carry you Amen. as you give in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have an attitude of giving to things of God. God does not owe any man. He doesn't need it. Hallelujah. He only needs it so that he can, the, the kingdom on earth can be propagated. And how can you give? Give in your tithe, give in your offerings, and give in your worship. Work for God. Don't just sit down. Work for God. It won't cost you anything. Hallelujah. When you give your 10%, your story will be like that woman who gave the last cake. And then it was, she was feeding. Wise people around them were starving. Hallelujah. Give. For common innovative success and prosperity, do these things. The Bible tells us the last, I mean, the penultimate verse that we read, Genesis 30, 43. It says, Thus the man came exceeding, became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels. What was the secret? How did it happen? He became exceedingly prosperous. What was the secret? It was that single innovation, single spark that I got. I, I can't explain it, and I'm sure who can explain it. You put a cow or sheep in front of uh, rods that you, and then the thing was making you to become more your own cattle are more, and your enemies or the person that your traducers cows are becoming not only smaller, they are also feebler. Your own is stronger. Hallelujah. So what was the secret? Open your Bibles to Genesis. Give us Genesis 31. Genesis 31, 10 to 13. And it came to pass... At the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grisled. And the angel of the Lord spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thy eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring streaked, speckled, and grisled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord, the Spirit of God, we reveal the secret of the kingdom and the secret of your success to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The angel appeared to Jacob in a dream. 
So that's one reason. But why did the angel appear to Jacob? Why? Let's open to Genesis 28, verse 18 and 22. Hallelujah. Genesis 28, verse 18. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. Amen. Let's look at 22. So which was what he told God that he was going to do. And then God spake and said, you remember, you spoke to me concerning, I was the one that you had appeared to you when you made your vow. And because of that vow, God said he was appearing to him. Hallelujah. So when you give, God does not owe you. You are speaking to your future. Because Jacob did not know where he was going. He was running away from his brother. He was going to Laban. He didn't even know the way. But by the time Laban began to deal with him, God showed up. I pray God will show up to you in trouble in the mighty name of Jesus. God will not allow you to be scammed in the name of Jesus Christ. God spoke to him and said, I was the one, I am the one that you appeared to that time when you did this. So because of the promise he gave, I will give you that tithe. It is plausible to say this is why God appeared to him. Because you gave me a promise. And that promise, I'm also waiting for it. Hallelujah. God will help us to give, especially in the area of our tithe. It's always very, sometimes when you look at all that you have, your responsibilities, and what you have, the resources, you can easily say, I will do it next time. Don't do it this year. It's like a man, a farmer eating his seeds. Several years ago, um, I appreciated that in the eastern part of the country where I did my youth call. You will see a big barn. And even if you've not been to that place, if you read Things Fall Apart, you will know that farmers don't play with the seeds. They'll keep it. I remember growing up, the, the shock of um, corns, they'll put it in the fireplace. And it will be one of the choicest. So when you are eating your, when you are not paying your tithe, you are eating your seed. You will not eat your seed because your seed is your future. So Jacob planted or gave the, he made the vow. He had not even paid it. He said, everything that you give me, I will pay a tenth of it. I will pay my tithe. I want you to speak to God where you are that, Father, help me from this moment to be faithful in the payment of my tithe and offerings in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the secrets of giving is also gratitude. If you don't, if you are not grateful, you cannot give. If you don't have the spirit of gratitude, you cannot give, especially to God. Because what you will say is that, how much is it now? The thing not rich. You're not rich. And my people, they talk for this, they say, at all, at all. Not bad. Give. And definitely, if you give, the 90% that remain would cover a thousand percent of your needs. That's why, that's why the young man or the young boy that gave the five loaves and two fishes, he had more than enough because there was no way the compassionate Jesus, the compassionate Christ, would have used that one and the 12 baskets that remained 
and they will just be looking at the boy to say, go and tell your parents that the fishes they told you to walk, there is no more. He will definitely go back with those 12. If, if not everything, at least he will get about seven baskets. One for each loaf of bread and one for two loaves of fishes. If they didn't give him everything. Hallelujah. So God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. And Genesis chapter 31, 13. God referred to, he said, I'm the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowed a vow unto me, unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. So God was telling him, when God showed him all of those things, he said, now you get out of this place. Because, number one, you worshipped me, you set up a pillar, and you also promised me that you will pay the tithe, a tenth of whatever I give you. So that's the reason why God appeared. Because that's the only thing God said was the reason why I'm appearing to you now. And I pray for each of your tithe, the Almighty God will show up for you in the mighty name of Jesus. When you pay your tithe, what happens? Apart from God blessing the other one. As Malachi 3, 11 says, says he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Who was devourer in this case? Laban. He changed this. He was changing his wages. He was changing it. And then the last one was Genesis 31, verse 1. Where the children said, this man, he has taken everything. If care is not taken, maybe they would mug and kill him. And say, let's take everything. You cannot go away with all of this. But because before they will finish their plan and they were just grumbling, the Almighty God showed to him that now you begin to run. I pray where trouble is, is lurking in the corner for you, the Almighty God, by his spirit, will tell you to get out of that place in the name of Jesus Christ. So God arose and rebuked Laban the devourer. Are you working for somebody who is eating his own seed and your own sweat? I pray the Almighty God, as He did for the children of Israel, He will take the fruits of your labor for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number three, what do you need to do to have ears that hear? Ears that hear God. Isaiah 30, verse 21, says, Your ears shall hear a word before, behind you, saying, This is the way. Walk ye, this is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right, and, and when you turn to the left. And verse 22 says, verse 22, give us 22, you shall defile also the covering of thy graven stones of silver and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as menstrual clothes. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee ends. Two things there. He said you will hear something. Your ears will hear what God is saying. I pray you will not be deaf of hearing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because if one is deaf of hearing, what happens? He won't even hear anything. Hallelujah. That will not be your portion. That will not be my portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. That verse 22 is very important. He was telling the nation of Israel that they should do away with graven images, which is sinful, which is an abomination to God. I want you to talk to God where you are seated and say, Father, whatever represents ungodliness in my life, please reveal to me and give me the grace to destroy them. What is that graven image of silver, of gold? What is that graven image in your life? God will reveal to you this morning and you, he will give you the grace to destroy them. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to also speak and make this pronouncement that I renounce every sin and sinful acts that can make me to be dull of hearing in the name of Jesus. I pray the Holy Spirit will give you the grace to turn, every, to turn aside every weight of sin that easily ensnares you in the name of Jesus. Number four, eyes that see according to how God sees or wants you to see and not how your flesh or your human eyes want to see. Eyes that see according to how God wants you to see or how God sees things. Hallelujah. One of the reasons why Lot went to Sodom, I will show you this morning. Genesis 13 verse 10. Genesis 13 verse 10. Genesis 13 verse 10. The Bible says, And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plains of Jordan that is well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. So he lifted up his eyes. He lifted up his eyes and he saw. Let's compare it to what happened in Genesis 13, verse 14. Genesis 13, verse 14. Genesis 13, verse 13, well, 14. The, and the Lord said unto Abraham, after the Lord was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes. Lord lifted up his eyes. God lifted up the eyes of Abraham. And so Abraham was able to see as God saw things, as God wanted him to see. I pray the Almighty God will be the one to open your eyes Amen. to that business, Amen. to that venture, Amen. to that career, Amen. to that new job Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will not see men as trees. Amen. I say you will not see men as trees. Amen. You know, in the book of Mark 8.24, Mark 8.24, that man whom Jesus Christ touched his eyes once, he said, can you now see? He said, I'm, I see men as trees. Imagine that man who is seeing men as trees. And somebody tells him, and or, or, of course, assume he was told, you will be a, a timber merchant. He will start cutting men as trees to sell, and he will, be, he will end up in jail. Because he see men as trees, everything, every man. And he would just say, oh, so this is timber. I will make so much money. By the time he kills number one, number two, they will say, this man is mad. Go and lock him up. You will not see men as trees. Amen. You will see your success as your success. Amen. You will not see other men's success as your own success. Amen. Because the Bible says, those who compare themselves with themselves, they are fools. You will not be a foolish man. This year, in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse, I mean, Psalm 121, verse 1 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Your eyes will see the hills of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 119, verse 18 says, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. That is seen as God wants you to see. That would be your testimony as God inspires you and gives you the nugget for success this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Number five, the grace to have the Spirit of God and align with His leading is very important. Grace to have the Spirit of God. When you have the Spirit of God, when you, the Holy Spirit comes to you, it becomes easier. Because there is a saying that like attracts like. You cannot have the spirit of the devil and the spirit of God will come to you. In fact, it's a repellent to the spirit of God. The spirit of God promotes a man and brings him out of obscurity. In the book of Daniel chapter 5, verses 10 to 11, God brought Daniel 
who had been forgotten, who had been forgotten back to lamplight. It was, it was not, no longer in reckoning. If you read that to verse, I mean, okay, let's read it. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, and not, not let thy countenance be changed. The next verse. He said, There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, and chargians and soothsayers. He had been forgotten. If not, um, Bethesda would not be saying, what is this? Who will solve my problem for you, for me? I pray where you have been rejected, the limelight of God will shine upon you. <laughs> that business that is dead or dying, the Almighty God will restore. Amen. There will be a rejuvenation. Amen. There will be a restoration Amen. to that career, to that academic, in the mighty name of Jesus. So Daniel was more or less consigned to history, but God brought him back because of the problem that somebody has. I pray you will be a problem solver. You will be the solution to some people's problems in the mighty name of Jesus. The failure of last year will not be yours this year. Amen. Jesus said, Satan be gone. I save into your lives. Failure be gone. Amen. Ill health be gone. Amen. Losses be gone. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Abundance will come. Amen. Abundance beckons unto you. Amen. Healing and good death beckons unto you. Amen. Your success comes unto you. Amen. This day and for the rest of this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number six, divine favor. Favor you cannot, because that Romans 9, 15, it is by favor. Favor makes the difference. Um, when when um, it was safe to travel by road, uh, once it is round about April, May, I mean, either on the Lagos Express Expressway or on the countryside, you see at least uh, maize or corn planted. And you will see the same farmer, the same land, you will see some maize very big. And you see some beside them just like this. The same way that a man standing like this, doing the same work, and another one doing the same with the other one. One will just be prospering. The other, you will not know what is happening. Hallelujah. Even on the same salary, you see some people, they will do so much. I'll pray. The favor of God will make him to rebuke the devourer in your finances in the name of Jesus. In Genesis 39, verses 2 to 5, the story of Joseph, the Bible says, the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. His master saw that the Lord was with him, just as our anchor. You will show to the sons of men the mighty acts of God this year. Amen. That's what our anchor scripture says. He was showing it. He could not hide it. His master saw it. And he knew that by his hands, a lot of things are happening to his own household. That is favor. And because of that, if, if God favors you, no man, no man can disfavor you. It's not possible. It is only when man favors you 
they can say, I'm withdrawing this favor. Hallelujah. There are some, some very mean, successful billionaires in this country. When you work for them, they want you to know that I am responsible for your life. I used to have a, I mean, a cousin who used to work for one of them. I mean, just to let you know, when, when men favor you, they can withdraw it at any time. So this, this I, told, I told one of our common cousins, and I said, this guy, I won't call him again. He's a young man. I'm the one that is calling him. So he told him. He then called me. He said, ah, brother, it's not like that. Too. The man I'm working for, that all my life, I don't have a life of my own. And he said, one single thing that happened, the man had approved of his annual leave. And he was traveling. He wanted to travel out. The man knew the day he was going to travel. He said he had already checked in at the airport with his wife. And then the man called and said, where are you? He said, I'm going. He said, no, come back. He said as he was going back, his wife was weeping into the, uh, where the, they were board the plane. The wife was weeping. He said, which kind of work is this? I pray. It is the favor of God that I will surpass that favor of men in your life. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And we can see, because God favored Joseph, he began to prosper. Imagine for a master to tell his slave that I know God is with you. Who says that just as Moses, just as Pharaoh told Moses, before you leave, come and pray for me. If I want to pray for you, I will tell you to kneel down. Pharaoh knelt down for Moses. I won't be surprised if this man that he knows God is with you will not also say, okay, lead us in a, a fellowship today. And when he's praying, even if the master did not uh, kneel down, he will close his eyes. Hallelujah. He will close his eyes at the command of his so-called slave. Hallelujah. God will make you to be the head wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Even in the prison, they left him alone. It's like you are on your own. Just be in the class of your own. So I pray for you. On the mountain top, you will find favor. Amen. When the storms of life come, you will find favor. Amen. The favor of God will remove you from that wind and storm in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even if it is the valley, it is just for a moment. The favor of God will bring you back to the mountain top. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look for number seven, just the last one, which is very crucial, very, very critical for us as Christians. You have to be a man and woman that is given to prayers. Prayers change things. It was in the place of prayer that God appeared to Jacob. By the time he woke up, he set up a stone poured oil on it to anoint it and he worshipped God and he made a vow. That was what he did. And because of that, God's favor followed him. Despite all the ups and downs, God still made sure when it is time for him to leave, he was not, he didn't stay a minute or a second longer. You will hear that voice from behind you. The decision that you need to take, it will speak unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer is very important. I have a personal relationship with God this year. So that that inspiration, the directions you need, the counsels, even the favor that we have spoken about, the mercy, the ears that hear, the eyes that see, the eyes that will see as God sees it will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. 
tarry a bit in the place of prayer this year. Because prayer will change your name from failure to success. In the name of Jesus Christ. That aborted success of last year will be full-blown success this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, that aborted pregnancy, whether biological or in business, the Almighty God will replace them with full-time delivery in the mighty name of Jesus. So you don't relate to God by proxy. Like I shared with um, the men yesterday during their prayers. You see, in the book of um, Genesis, let me see if I can bring it up. In the book of Genesis, um, is it 24? Genesis 24, let me just quickly. Um, Genesis 24. Verse 7, I mean verses 12 to 28. Abraham's servant was praying to God. He said, the Lord God of my master Abraham. It means he was relating to God through Abraham. So he was relating to God by proxy. That is the good thing with you and I. Jesus Christ paid the price. And it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And because you are now a child of the kingdom, you don't need to say through Abraham when you are in the place of prayer. So pray to God. Be a man of prayer. Be a woman of prayer. If I be a child, a teenager of prayer. Be a youth of prayer. Hallelujah. And when you do that, God will reveal the evil intents of the enemy to you. So please, let's tarry a bit in the place of prayer this year. Directly. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to close our eyes. As we, as I, we round off this, this word of exhortation. Just as you cannot pray effectively by proxy. You can also not be a child of God, if you don't have a relationship with him. Yes, there might be corporate anointing because everybody is here. But when you live here, would God speak to you as he spoke to Jacob? Would he tell you this is what you should do? If you don't have a relationship, you cannot hear anything. That word that was spoken, that you will hear something from behind you, you can't hear it. So, if you have not yet given your life to Christ, this is the critical opportunity, crucial for you, that you will not be someone who is just moving in circles. I want you to pray. If you are there, please just raise up your hand and I pray with you. Don't take your 2023 lightly. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, this is the time. It's an opportunity for you. If there is no one, I want us to be on our feet. As we pray. Genesis chapter 24. Verse 12. Genesis 24 verse 12. 
And he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Just as we are saying, it's like you cannot even say, show kindness to me because there is no, that thing is not there. But our prayer point is good speed. Like I shared with the men yesterday, good speed has three dimensions, and we are going to pray about them. But let me tell you, three dimensions of good speed. The first one is to, be, to have a good speed running the right race. To have good speed and running the right race. A man can have good speed and is running the wrong race. If a man is supposed to be a teacher and is a clerk somewhere, is in the wrong race. That's number one. So it could be your business. Maybe you are supposed to be selling foodstuffs and you are selling baby's clothes. Even if it is, it is prospering, you are still doing another man's job. If you are in the right business, it will be more than that. The second thing about good speed is to run that speed in the right direction. If you want to jackpot, are you supposed to jackpot to the UK or to Canada or to Australia? If you, if you are supposed to jackpot to the UK and you jackpot to Australia, you jackpot that. <laughs> so, or you just be moving in circles there. So, if you want to be a Japanese, pray that God will give you good speed in the right direction. The last one, we are going to take everything together. So I'm telling you how you are going to. It's good speed to run the race with the right speed and accuracy. Now, if you are too slow, if that uh, Abraham's uh, servant, Eliezer, ran too fast, he would, run, he would have run ahead of Rebecca. He won't, they won't meet at the well. If he was too slow, eh, Rebecca would have gone to the well and gone back home before he got there. Have you got the three dimensions? So I want you to pray to God. I leave you, pray to God and say, Father, Lord, the right race and good speed give unto me. Good speed in the right direction. Give unto me, O Lord. Good speed, with the right speed, with the right space, give unto me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. My God and my Father, Lord, give me good speed for year 2023 to do the right business, to run the right race in the right direction. The man who is supposed to find his business in worry and faces and faces uh, Abuja, there may not be anything to come out of it. He may get kidnapped on the way. Pray to God. Father, give me good speed this year to run the right race that will make me to succeed. In the name of Jesus, good speed, O oh Lord, in the right direction. When I'm supposed to face the north, I will not face the south. When I'm supposed to face the east, I will not face the West. I will face where you want me to face in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, give me good speed in my pace, in my speed. Give me strength, O oh Lord.